escuchó el ruido de los helicópteros, pero llegaron disparando yo y ta, 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 que hacían los, los aviones. Pues. Y de repente se metieron para un lado y de repente apareció un avión conmigo también. Yo, digo, yo pensaba que iba a caer el avión o, o iba a dar vueltas nomás. Yo. Pensé yo, pero no, llegó disparando. Here in the central area of Kosala, before we head up to the mountains of the so-called Golden Triangle to investigate a recent incident of possible abuse at the hands of Mexico's government as it continues to hunt for Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Guzman is the world's most wanted drug lord, accused of leading a multi-billion dollar operation of smuggling weed, heroin and methamphetamine into the United States and around the world. In July, El Chapo used an elaborate tunnel to escape from the Altiplano Federal Prison in central Mexico. Authorities and media reported that the drug lord was flown back to this part of the country, the so-called Golden Triangle, the three-state area of Sinaloa, Chihuahua, and Durango. The region is where the Sinaloa cartel grows marijuana and poppy for its drug empire. This was obviously a huge embarrassment for the country and its chief anti-Chapo ally, the United States. And Mexico's government says it is determined to recapture it. In early October, Mexico's elite navy apparently came close to capturing Guzman in Tamazula, Durango. This could have been a game-changing moment that the government needed, but instead, El Chapo managed to get away, presumably with the help of regional leaders and locals in the territory that he controls. But how he actually did so remains a mystery. The government didn't say much. A multi-agency statement said that El Chapo was injured and had escaped, but did not explain how that information had been gathered. In Mexico's drug war, officials have been caught falsifying evidence or lying to the public. This time, critics said, seemed no different. After a chaotic few days, locals came down from the Durango Mountains to reach the small town of Posala, across state lines in Sinaloa. They said they had come under attack from Mexican Navy helicopters in the same area where Chapo was almost caught. But did the locals help Chapo? Did any of them fire weapons against the authorities as the government had implied? Locals said no. They told reporters they didn't know who Chapo was, had never seen him, and that they had no idea why authorities attacked him. A month later, many of these campesinos remained in Cosala, displaced. One of these displaced ranchers is 31-year-old Gonzalo Peña. He and his family are living with his mother-in-law in Cosala. He explained to us what happened that day. La cosa fue el 6 de, de octubre, ¿verdad? Como poquito antes de las 8 llegó, se escuchó el ruido de los helicópteros, llegaron al rancho de Limón, pero llegaron disparando yo y ta, 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 ta que hacían los, los aviones, pues. Y de repente se metieron para un lado y de repente apareció un avión conmigo también. Yo digo, yo pensaba que iba a caer el avión o, o iba a dar vueltas nomás, pero no. Llegó disparando. Y de ahí dejo lo que hice y saqué a mi mujer de allí. Mi, mi preocupación, dije, nos van a matar aquí. Nos van a matar, pero lo que pensaba yo, que nos iban a matar ahí. Nomás que en una vuelta así, nosotros nos metimos en una calle, se le dice un San Juan, y nos tatemamos de sacate y de monte así, y ya nos, nos miraban. El paje escondido casi hasta la, pues, que, que se hiciera nochecita, porque de día no podíamos, porque el avión, los aviones no paraban de circular, circular y circular. Y de ahí ya nos vinimos al lado de al lado del águila. Y ahí me encontré con el hermano mío, que también le había pasado la misma situación. Y de ahí nos vinimos rumbo a Cosalá. Pasamos cuatro días caminando. ¿Y no se han reportado nada? ¿No se han disculpado? No nada, se han, no han nada, explicado. nada. No, nadie nos ha dado una explicación por qué llegaron así. Behind me is the local offices of the DIF. This is the, basically the welfare agency in Mexico. And for many of these families, it's now nearly a month that they've been displaced by this operation. In this month, they've basically been sitting here in this town in Cosala, unable to find work, unable to really care completely for their families, uh, which is why the welfare agency here is providing them with very basic um, goods uh, to go about their day. Today, 
they're hearing from a small group of lawyers who are basically explaining to them what they need to do in order to file lawsuits or claims against the federal government and against the Navy as a result of this operation. What we didn't know at the time is that at least one of these lawyers has represented El Chapo in court in Mexico. Probably not a coincidence. Guzman has an army of lawyers fighting for his interests in the court system. So far, we've been unable to verify the ranchers' claims because the Navy has not agreed to give us a formal interview and said that they could not guarantee our safety if we try to go up to the ranches ourselves. Our crew and I are now headed to Gonzalo Peña's ranch, uh, just over the state line from the state of Durango, the same place that he says Mexican Marines came in shooting directly at him uh, nearly a month ago now in their hunt for Joaquin Guzman. Hasta que con, según que buscaban al Chapo, que, que la Marina andaba buscando al Chapo ahora por los medios, estaba, hasta ahora que comenzaron a buscarlo para acá. We've been on this very, very bumpy road here between Durango and Sinaloa for about 45 minutes. So we're going to be doing this for two hours. This is another part of the country that is out of cell phone range, off the map really and where people like uh, Gonzalo and his family um, live and, and, and carry on with their lives. As the sun began to set, we made it to Gonzalo's ranch, where he showed us how his car had been destroyed in the attack. Mario Disparación. ¿Cómo crees que pasó esto entonces? Eso tenía que haber sido una, una cosa que despapajó acá adentro. ¿eh? Porque si algo ha sido quemado, quemado no, no haga hecho tanto desmadre. Okay? Mm -hmm. Esto fue del ¿Qué? aire porque aquí están disparos grandes. Lo quemaron. ¿Tú lo compraste? Yo lo compré. Yo y mi papá lo compramos el carro este. Cuando hubo una venta de, de becerros, compramos el carro. Well, this is such a remote region that Gonzalo can't even drive up to his house. Now we're gonna check out his ranch house up here. This is Gonzalo Peña's house here, high in the mountains. As Gonzalo has told us, he was here on the morning of Tuesday, October 6, when out of nowhere, without any warning, a convoy of Mexican Navy helicopters came and submitted this property to an aerial attack. You can see the entrance of some of this gunfire that clearly is coming from above uh, to this property. Aquí la casita también tiene varios disparos, tiene uno. De este lado tiene, se le mira más. Yo aquí en este cuarto estaba, yo me refugié allí, en esta parte de aquí. Y cuando una, una vuelta que dio el avión, yo y mi hija y mi mujer salimos corriendo hacia este lado. Seguía disparando aquí en la casa. Ahí se miran los disparos que están. ¿Todavía no te explicas por qué hubieran atacado de esa forma? Realmente no. No sé por qué disparar. Mm -hmm. ¿Y no crees que si en algún punto aquí había en, en otros ranchos por acá sembrado mota o amapola que vinieran como para vengarse por eso? ¿Vengarse o, de qué? Por... Pues sí, la gente aquí en los ranchos es lo que siembra, a veces muchos siembran amapola, muchos siembran mota. Uh -huh. Pero siempre ha venido el gobierno y la destruye, pero no. Uh -huh. No sé por qué lo harían ahora sin de esta agresión. Pero ahorita no, no hemos visto mucha siembra de eso. No, no, pues no, se, no, no se miran. No se mira. Realmente no se mira. The people who were subjected to this attack um, have not been able to return 
to their homes up here. After all these weeks, uh, there still has been no formal or proper response uh, to explain what happened right here in this ranch and in many, many others in these mountains. Well, this is uh, Jardines de Maya. This is the famous cemetery here in Culiacán, Sinaloa, where many of these extremely opulent mausoleum-like graves are here honoring um, fallen members, basically, of organized crime of the Sinaloa cartel. This is a corona, a traditional Mexican uh, flower arrangement sent by none other than El Chapo himself, Joaquín Guzmán Loera, for a man that he identifies as El Perrillo, and this is happening in the midst of a serious operation by Mexico's military, in particular by Mexico's Navy, in this very desperate effort on the part of the Mexican government to capture Joaquin Guzman Loera. And here he is honoring a friend or an associate of his amidst uh, the Day of the Dead celebrations in Mexico. Yo a ese hombre, el Chapo, yo la verdad no, yo no conozco a ese hombre y gente que anda con él tampoco. Yo soy criado ganado, le ayudo a mi papá, siembro maíz, frijol. Y cuando hay chance de sembrar otras cosas, pues a veces la siembro. Pero va el gobierno a la tumba y es lo que pasa a veces. Pero nunca nos habían llegado disparando, no haya así. Han llegado a veces que... Quieren saber una cosa y uno a veces pues, no sabe nada y a golpe le quieren sacar las cosas también, ¿va? Pero eso es lo normal, ¿va? Pero ya llegando no a disparar. Pues yo me gustaría irme al rancho, pero pues, ¿qué tal si nos llegan y otra vez y, y nos pueden llegar disparando? O, o... Uno ya anda con el temorcito, pues, que, que no se sabe cómo están las cosas ahorita. Ya. In recent weeks, reports and rumors have swirled around El Chapo's supposed whereabouts. Just like after his first jailbreak in Mexico in 2001, Guzman's alleged recent tunnel escape caused the drug lord's legend to grow. What actually happened in those mountains, meanwhile, remains a mystery. But it's already cast a harsh light on Mexico's navy. In the fight against the country's drug cartels, the navy is seen as more reliable and professional than the much larger army, which faces mountain charges of human rights abuses. Today, El Chapo remains a fugitive. And this latest incident here in Sinaloa in the government's hunt for the drug lord shows that maybe no branch of Mexico's armed forces is immune from making mistakes or violating human rights. <laughs>